Right. So, hello everyone, and welcome to this video in which we'll be solving the questions of one of the reading competition exercises of CAT 2023 slot one. The passage itself we have read in a previous video, and the link to that video has been shared in the description. So, if you have not watched the video, I would highly recommend that you watch that video first, and then you come down to this video. Then this video's explanations for the solutions for each of the questions will make a lot more sense. So if you have read the video or you have watched the video and read the passage, you would have realized that this passage is all about geographic factors versus non-geographic factors and how the author says the geographic factors are as important as non-geographic factors in determining or as driving factors behind human phenomena. So let's go through the questions one by one now. So first question of this passage says that the author criticizes scholars who are not geographers for all of the following reasons except... So we have to use the process of elimination here. So um, the author is criticizing geographers for what reason? So if I look at option D first, let's start with option D. D says the importance it plays on the role of individual decisions when studying human phenomena. So this criticism is present directly inside the passage. If you look at this last paragraph in this slide here, then the author is talking about how it was not one influential Inuit leader who persuaded the remaining in youth in 1783 to adopt warm fur clothes. So clearly this is a criticism that the author has that not everything is determined by individual decisions. That such a human phenomenon of in youths wearing fur clothes is definitely geographically determined and this is a criticism given inside the passage. So that's why option D cannot be the correct answer. C says their labeling of geographic explanations as deterministic. So the reading of the passage itself, we had discussed that how they say that geographic reasons are deterministic and, and since nothing can be deterministic, so that is the reason why they often denounce geographic explanations altogether. So that is also something that we discussed in the reading of the passage itself in the third paragraph that is directly given. So C cannot be the answer because it is a criticism. Among A and B, B says their rejection of the role of biogeographic factors in social and cultural phenomena. So this is also directly present in the fourth paragraph of the passage. Again, I'll go back to the passage to show you. Uh, it's written here in this particular sentence that several reasons may underlie widespread but not a sensical view. This particular paragraph is talking about how they don't believe in biogeographic features because of racist um, tones to it. And even in the first slide, even here they are talking about here the explanation is biogeographic, but scholars often don't look at biogeographic factors as a determining factor. So this is also a sense of an explanation. At least it's present inside the passage. Whereas A says they're outdated interpretations of past cultural and historical phenomena. So nowhere in the passage is it actually implied that their interpretations are outdated and they need to update it. The passage just says that they don't consider geography as a factor at all. And for that reason, B is not the answer and A is the most correct answer. This is a difficult question. You have to use a process of elimination. You have to figure out which is the most correct answer. Which among the options is most not present in the passage as a criticism for followers. And for that reason, answer for 13 has to be A. It is very easy to get confused between A and any other option. I feel that A and B can be pretty confusing here. So if you have marked B and gotten this answer wrong, don't be too hard on yourself. Similarly, moving on to question number 14. 14 says the examples of the Inuit and Aboriginal Australians are offered in the passage to show. So why are these two examples used? Of course, these two examples are being used inside the second paragraph as we have discussed in order to make the primary point of the author that sometimes geographic factors are the reason behind determining natural phenomena or human phenomena. That is why all these examples have been given. So if you look at the options, 14 becomes a relatively easier question compared to the remaining questions of this particular passage. Answer has to be A. Of physical circumstances. They are using physical circumstances as a substitute for geographical factors or geographical explanations can dictate human behavior and cultures. Why the remaining options are wrong is because B says that these societies were self-sufficient and adaptive. The author never is talking about societies becoming self-sufficient or never is talking about adaptation. That's why B is not the correct answer. Similarly, C talks about resourcefulness. The passage is not about human beings being resourceful and using the natural resources. That is not what the author is trying to communicate and that's why C cannot be the answer. And D says how environmental factors lead to comparatively divergent parts. These two examples have not been given. To compare to each other, 
how people in Australia and how people in the Arctic Circle were behaving differently. It is not a comparison that is happening inside the passage between these two cultures. That's why D is also not the correct answer. I feel that 14 people should get correct if they have read the passage well enough. Moving on to 15, the third question of this particular uh, passage. It says all of the following can be inferred from the passage except. So let's look at the options and let, let's again use the process of elimination. A says several academic studies of human phenomena in the past involved racist interpretations. This is given inside the passage that there have been racist interpretations to both geographic and non-geographic explanations for human phenomena. So A looks like it is given inside the answer. So A will not be the, or in, in the passage, that's why A will not be the correct answer. B says individual diktat and contingency were not the causal factors for the use of fur. This is absolutely given inside the passage by the author. That's why B is definitely not the correct answer. In fact, B is the first option that I will eliminate. C says agricultural practices changed drastically in the Australian continent after it was colonized. This is also given in the very first paragraph here that how Aboriginal Australia remained the sole contingent or the continent occupied by hunter-gatherers with no indigenous farming or herding. And the explanation is biogeographic because Australian continent does not have any domesticable native animal species and few domesticable native plant species. So instead, the crops and domestic animals that now make Australia a food and wool exporter are all non-native species such as sheep, wheat and grapes brought to Australia by overseas colonists. So when colonists came, only then they brought all these animals and plants. And only after that did their entire um, farming practices and their animal husbandry practices change. So this is also given inside the passage and that is why C is not the correct answer. D says, while most human phenomena result from culture and individual choice, some have biogeographic origins. Now this also seems like it has been given inside the passage. That's what makes 15 a very confusing question because all four options look like they have been given inside the passage. So here we have to use comparison again and comparatively we have to see that which is less correct. And that is why D becomes the correct answer. Simply because of semantics, simply because of playing around with words here, because they are talking about most here and some here. Which means that this option is implying that most means more than 50%. Majority of the phenomena are a result of cultural and individual choice. Whereas only minority are a result of biogeographic factors. And this is not something that the author will agree with. And that is what makes D incorrect. This is why reading the options very carefully is important. Now, some sense of arguments that I've gotten from students in this question is that they say that, sir, even option A says several, several academic studies. But see, several is an individual word. It's not a comparable word. It's not a comparative word. Most is a comparative word. That comparatively, this is maximum. And everything else is lesser than this. Several just means many. So many, there can be many. There can be more than many as well. So that's why A is more correct than D is. And that's why... D has to be the correct answer because this cannot be inferred from the passage. So 15 is also a pretty confusing question. And last question of this passage says that all of the following are advanced by the author as reasons why non-geographers disregard geographic influences on human phenomena except there. So 16, if I look at the options, last question of the passage, if I look at the options, again, I have to use comparison. I have to use the process of elimination. A says belief in a central role of humans unrelated to physical surroundings in influencing phenomena. So this is something that the author is criticizing scholars about. Author is saying that the scholars often say this, that um, inside a contingent or contingency uh, paragraph, the author is saying that people often denounce geographic explanations because of this reason. So A is given as a sense of criticism, as a reason why non-geographers or non-geographers denounce geographic explanations. So Maybe A is not the correct answer, but let's read the remaining options. B says lingering impressions of past geographic analysis that were politically offensive. This is directly given inside the passage as a reason that some of the geographic explanations were racist. So that's why people tend to denounce them. So B is definitely not the correct answer because it is given by the author as a reason why non-geographers disregard geographic influences. Looking at C, C says disciplinary training, which typically does not include technical knowledge of geography. Last paragraph of the passage talks about this very thing. So C also is not the answer. Let's read D now. D says dismissal of explanations that involve, involve geographical causes for human behavior. Are these being done by non-geographers? Absolutely they are. So D also seems like it is given inside the passage. 
So answer is among A or D, or you can say that all four are given inside the passage, so it's very difficult to figure out which is the correct answer. Now this question then comes down to which of the options answers the question. The question is asking which of the following is not one of the reasons why non-geographers disregard geographic influences. Now, among A and D, which is a reason and which is not? If you ask yourself, then you will realize that A is a reason, whereas B is not the reason. Because D directly is saying that non-geographers denounce geographical causes for human behavior. So it is not giving us a reason for it to happen. It is just restating the question. It is just restating what non-geographers are doing. It is not telling us why non-geographers are doing what they are doing. And that is why D is the correct answer. It is not a reason why non-geographers are disregarding geographic influences on human phenomena. So these are the answers to the four questions. This passage, although it's a short passage to read, but hands down in CAT 23 slot 1, this was the toughest reading commission exercise for multiple reasons. Firstly, three questions. The first, the third, and the fourth question that we have just discussed. All of them have really confusing options and I have to read the options very carefully and also understand the question very carefully in order to get to the correct answer. Plus, three of the questions have the word accept, which is a word that people tend to forget very quickly when they start reading the options and people always tend to look for options that are true according to the passage. So if you forget to read and understand the question and you miss out on the word accept or your mind fails to register the word accept, then you can get several different questions wrong. A really good performance in this particular exercise, I would say it's two out of four questions correct. Anyone who's getting more than two questions correct has done an excellent job in this particular exercise. Thank you.